Welcome to Caribbean Griots. Storytelling comes in many forms. It is not just in the spoken word or the written word. We hear stories in the notes of music and in the lyrics of a song. We see stories in the patterns of a dance movement and in the brush strokes of paintings. Our future, past and present story is written into our DNA. Everything tells a story. Throughout cultures, throughout the world, the storyteller is regarded as the record keeper. They understand that stories are important for the movement of life. Storytellers keep the wisdom of the past and understand how it is to be moved into the future. Stories are our connection to the past and the way to our future and of our understanding of the present now. This collection of stories, written and performed by our Caribbean griots, are tales of how we can transcend adversities such as jealousy and betrayal. They are stories which deal with courage and pride and speak of the blessings that have been gifted to us. Every person has their book of stories. Let's listen to one now. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we will begin. Love rain down on me, on me. Chichi is a verve monkey who lives on the beautiful island of St. Kitts. He lives with his six brothers and sisters. Seven, if you count the little one who's still hanging on to his mommy's tummy. Chichi and his brothers spend most of their times playing monkey games. They always travel together and looked out for one another. Once, the oldest brother, Moore, slipped down a drain pipe and hurt his paw. Chi-Chi had to push his tail down the drain pipe and pull his brother out. Another time, Chi-Chi was running through a kosher bush. His youngest brother, John John, spent hours pulling the spikes out of Chi-Chi's fur. It was a brother's job to look for food for the family. Verve monkeys love fruits, but sometimes it was hard to find. Much of the delicious fruit was behind tall walls and fences. Well, the walls and fences were not much of a problem for monkeys. They can climb anything. But the problem was the dogs. Everyone seemed to have a dog roaming in their yard, and they would chase the monkeys away. Chi Chi and his brothers had heard of one house where there was no such problem. They heard that the yard had many fruit trees of all kinds, mangoes and guavas and pawpaws and soursops and golden apples and plums. All year round there was something blooming. They heard that no one lived in the house, no humans and no dogs. Every day when the brothers went hunting, they searched for this house. Mo and John John did not really believe that it existed, but Chi Chi was sure he would find it one day. And so he did, quite by chance. It was a very hot Sunday. Too hot for the monkeys to get up to their usual mischievous games. Chi Chi was bored, and so his mind began to work. He needed a new adventure. Chi Chi said to his brothers, Let's go exploring somewhere we've never been before. Mo yawned and responded, It's too hot to go anywhere. I'm long overdue for a bath. I'll get Mama to clean me up. And he ran off. Chi Chi looked at John John. You come in? And he walked off, knowing that John John would follow him everywhere as he always did. The two brothers roamed around and found themselves on a road they had never been to before. They spotted a tree just inside a garden laden with soursop. The house had a dog but she had taken refuge from the heat under the thickets of ginger lilies. She was fast asleep. Chi Chi and John John could hear her snoring softly. Chi Chi whispered to John John, Come on, cover me, I'm going in. Call me if she wakes up. 
John John cried out softly, No, no, it's too dangerous, don't go. But Chi Chi had already gone. He quickly scaled the wall and scampered through the garden, up into the soursop tree. He sat there eating one and then another of the delicious ripe fruit. John John waited outside, watching the sleeping dog. After a while, he grew tired of waiting for Chi Chi. He moved and went around closer to the fence to try to see what Chi Chi was doing. The monkey's scent wafted to the dog's nostrils and he woke up. He ran to the gate and he gave a ferocious mock, saying, Don't even think about coming in here. John John called out in a panic, Chi Chi, get out, she's awake. But it was too late. The dog in the garden had already smelt Chi Chi and she ran around to the back barking ferociously. When she discovered Chi Chi in the tree, the dog was furious. She barked ferociously and jumped as high as she could, snapping at the monkey. The tree was not very tall and the dog's teeth were dangerously close to Chi Chi's paws. Chi Chi looked around and noticed some more trees in the garden on the other side of the wall. He did a quick calculation. If he leapt from the tree to the wall, and then just as quickly from the wall to the tree on the other side, he just might make it out of the yard. It was a long leap, but Chi Chi knew he could do it. He took a deep breath, and he made the jump and escaped into the other yard. He sat in the tree listening. No dogs, no humans. It was perfectly quiet. All he could hear was his heart beating. And then it hit him. He'd found it. He'd found their paradise. Chi Chi jumped down from the tree and he roamed freely around the garden, choosing his fruit. It was even better than he had imagined. Ripe mangoes, sweet guavas, huge soursop and pawpaw all at his fingertips. And the smell was wonderful. All the smells blended together to create an incredible odor. It was simply delightful. There was even a broken jar filled with water. Chi Chi put his head in to take a drink and he almost fell in. The longer Chi Chi stayed, the more excited he became. He couldn't believe that he had actually found their paradise. Finally, he remembered poor John John waiting on the other side of the garden for him and he decided it was time for him to go home. He picked some extra fruits, stored it under his arms, picked up a soursop in his mouth, and then looked around to contemplate how was he going to escape. He realized that there were no houses in the front of this yard. He ran to the front gate, jumped up onto the wall, and leapt over. Zoom! A car rushed past just a few inches from Chi Chi's nose. Chi Chi screeched and he jumped back onto the wall and back over into the garden. He was too terrified to think. When he finally calmed down, he went carefully and slowly to the front of the yard and looked out. There was a busy road right in front of the house. Large trucks and buses and cars passed back and forth along this road. To Chi Chi, so small in comparison to the trucks, it was as if he was standing in the middle of an airport runway with airplanes zooming back and forth over his head. To make things worse, the dogs in the house on the left had finally noticed him. Three large Rottweilers were barking at him at the fence. On the right side, a dog had come out and an elderly man was shaking a stick at the monkey in the tree. Chi Chi looked all around him. To the left, three dogs. To the right, the dog and the man. Behind him, the dog that he had escaped from at the very beginning and in front, a busy street. He thought of his brothers waiting for him at home and he made a decision. Staying as close to the side of the road as possible, tail high in the air, and running faster than he had ever run in his entire life, Chi Chi scampered home. The end.